Hello, kit heads. We are talking kit, the home of the greatest football kit content in the whole entire world. Welcome back. We are deep diving into the rank bank again for 10 more shirts due to muse over that we have already ranked. I'm going to have a nice little look at them um, before we get any further. I forgot to do it to start the last uh, four kit rankers. So I'm going to do it now. Be sure to smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your kit loving friends. Yes, it is a Wednesday. Well, this is when it comes out on a Wednesday. You might be watching it on a Tuesday or a Sunday. It doesn't matter when you watch it. As long as you're here and you're a kit head and you're getting involved, that's the main thing. Full kit rankers, this is what it's all about. I am Double A, obviously, as always. And me is the one and only, Mr. Dom. How's it going, Dom? Yes, all good. Yeah, can't grumble. No one listens if I do anyway. To be honest, I, I do. I'll, I'll, I'll be your agony young co cousin. Agony <laughs> person, fine. Yeah, agony person. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, no, no, I'm all good. Uh, can't complain, and it's a good job I don't need to. Uh, lots of interesting stuff going on, and obviously now within the throws of the women's world cup um it's good to have some football back on and football for breakfast sign me up i'll yeah. take that any day of the week i'm telling you i was like so if you haven't, you haven't seen the thumbnail already we are looking at the women's world cup which is currently going on in australia and new zealand i've really enjoyed it honestly i like i say it's not just a case of these football back on because obviously in the men's game pre-season is happening so there is football but it's generally brilliant competitive football like i've been watching some of the games and losing my mind but we'll speak to our guest about that a little bit soon we'll get properly into all of that but it's just good to have it on and i was thinking yeah i'm gonna watch every game i'm up early to watch every game then i realized we we're putting them on at three o'clock in the morning it's like i wouldn't even watch <laughs> manchester united at that time so i do apologize but i do try my best to watch all the games even in work got my ipad next to me I'm invested, absolutely. But no, uh, I'm looking forward to this this week's episode. Ten amazing shirts. No Sean with us. No Jay. He's also not able to make it. So there's just going to be three of us on this week's show, which I'm looking forward to. I'm fine. I'll, I'll try and feel a little bit. I'm all right. I'm okay. All good. Uh, feeling very yellow today, obviously, as you can see. Representing one of the nations. I have to. One of the what a great first game for them as well. But yeah, I can't. Oh. Talk about a little later on for sure. But yes, if you don't know, if you've not seen it before, Full Kit Rankers is all about us searching the corners of not just the football kit community, but the football community in general, bringing people in and getting them to look over 10 shirts and then ranking them from 1 to 10. Each number has a score behind it. So not shirt number one has 10 points, down to shirt number 10, which has one point. We ask five people to rank. I don't rank anymore. Five people rank, and then I get all their scores, top them up, and we have our final list, which we then go through and talk about. Dom sometimes gets annoyed. Dom always gets annoyed, actually. It was guaranteed at something mainly quite trivial, and half the time, nothing to do with the show. Yeah, absolutely. And the facial expressions, all the way through the last episode with Chris, those facial expressions were absolutely brilliant when some of the shirts were... We're getting revealed, but nonetheless, I look forward to seeing a few more uh, this week. No mention of Lois Biscoff anywhere on this show. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we'll leave that well alone. So, yeah, if you like our choices, if you like the shirts, be sure to hit the comments. Let us know where we've got it right and where we've got it wrong. But now we'll get our esteemed guest on. Yeah, they're part of what is an amazing company um, spreading the What's the best way to put it? Spread in the sort of the, the the needing to know and all about the women's game, um, you know, in inclusivity and just making sure there's an outlet for women's game in general, you know, specifically for that. It's nice that although they are inclusive with the men's game, they have that sort of own sort of branch and own um outlet for, for themselves, uh, which is always great. And yeah, I, I'm I'm happy they've 
agreed to come on the show. I'm really looking forward to speaking to them and just talking to them about kits as well, which is always great and good thing to know. Their background is better than mine. I, I, I hate that. <laughs> it's definitely better than mine. Mine looks like well, a, yeah, a, you a, you've a let side down for me after last week looking amazing to now you've just gone to a blank wall playing it down. <laughs> but we will get them on. Uh, no, it's fine. It's fine, mate. Oh, it's not. It's, it's not. Not an issue. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll get our guest on. We're really happy to be joined by Arvin from uh, Foudy.com. Many ventures. Ah, there we go. Hello, Arvin. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Really good. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us. Really looking forward to having you on. Uh, like I said, uh, I mentioned Foudy.com. I wouldn't be able to do it half as much justice as you can. So, for the people that may not understand or may not know about it, please give us a little rundown on what Fowdies is and what you guys kind of do. Yeah, so we are the world's first and currently only uh, resale platform dedicated solely to the women's game. So um, if you watch the WSL, you'll see that teams like United, City, Arsenal, they all have a different kind of font on the back to what you'd be used to watching the Premier League. And when we started in December of 2020, you couldn't find that anywhere. It wasn't accessible via the clubs, it wasn't accessible from like Sports Direct, all the major retailers basically. And our founder, Helen, basically just said, if I can't buy it, why don't I offer it instead? Um, and her kind of love for both the women's game, uh, jerseys in general, what you can't see in my background is the, like, the, the mountains of kits that she has um, <laughs> that are just in storage at the moment, but a lot of uh, Newcastle kits, which uh, it's not great. But um, yeah, she kind of, saw that at the 2019 World Cup and was like, if I can see people wearing Beckham shirts, if I can see people who travelled all the way from the USA to France wearing a shirt with no stars, why is that? And that's kind of how we came about. And we're pleased to have increased our offering from all of WSL to covering most of the World Cup jerseys um, that we're going to be ranking. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our story in a very condensed uh, version. I think, I think you've hit the nail on the head and it's, it's nice. It's one of those, isn't it? You know, you get it to sort of generalise it with certain shirts from certain countries and you're like, well, I love these Brazilian teams. I love these Argentinian teams. Why can't I get them? So yeah. it's even worse when it's teams within the country where you live. You know, I, I often go on the Manchester United fan myself and I would say the, the font for the women's team is actually better than the men's. The cup font is absolutely beautiful. And the WSL one, I actually, I actually really love it. And... Um, you know, some of the women, women's team, you, 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 after the sort of last year, the Euros and everything, you've kind of grown team a lot more on social media now, which is absolutely brilliant. And I think the boom of the women's game in this country, for me especially, is so, so good. And, and I always bring it back to, you know, I've got a young daughter myself and her not having to watch me watch videos of Ronaldo, or not Brazilian Ronaldo, not to see um, <laughs> all the time. And, and she'll have... If she gets into football, she's now got heroes of her own, and that must be for someone like yourself. What it's all, what it's all about, right? No, hundred percent. It's it's kind of always goes back to that fifty-year ban that women had in the country. You couldn't play football. There were teams pre that fifty-year ban that would be in the attendances of the men's equivalent, so like Ditko ladies, and you kind of had that huge surge, and then it just all got scrapped like immediately, and then. You kind of have this kind of lost generation of, of of women that want to play the game, who want to support the game, but haven't really had an outlet for that. Which I think the surge, especially since the Euros, like you mentioned, has been absolutely incredible. Even from a like a kind of playing perspective as well. Like we've seen at my club, um, which again is founded by our the same founder of Foudies, which is Manchester Laces. Um, we've kind of seen a surge from the the lost generation of footballers. So having these people to go forward and kind of look up to has been so cool. Even in like, uh, people always kind of talk about like, like inspiring kids, inspiring the next generation of boys and girls. But I think it's really important to kind of look and see the people of all ages have been inspired by this England team and by, by every team um, that's representing themselves on this global stage. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think the correlation between just the aesthetics of, seeing and having that representation i think it's really important to to extend to any generation or any any kind of fan and um, that that if you can see it you should be able to be it and and the 
the kind of reluctance um, of major outlets to give an access point to, you know, uh, emulating the, those kind of heroes that young children have got um, seems seems a huge miss. And again, we've seen it highlighted with uh, the World Cup with Mary Earps as well, uh, with Nike not um, making any uh, goalkeeper kits, uh, replica kits to, to available to buy, which is which is ludicrous. And it's it's been good to see that you know. Um, some prominent figures have, have kind of you know relayed that message uh, and obviously uh, Mary herself um, uh, putting out an article and then absolutely bossing it in a England's first game as well just to hammer, hammer home the point it is huge and um, so yeah that the representation is key um, for me I think. Yeah for sure I also like United didn't miss a beat either they were quick on their the little Instagram post saying well you can buy a jersey here guys if you really want one I was like yeah okay um, don't surprise me that uh, you're not jumping on that. So obviously, with the World Cup having been on, how have you found it? Have you, uh, like I imagine, like most of us, we've just been enthralled with some of the absolute wonderful football that's been on display so far. Yeah, it's been great. It's um, destroyed my sleeping schedule more than I thought it would, um, <laughs> but I don't really mind waking up at two a.m., three a.m. to watch some of the football that's been on. Like even looking recently at the USA Netherlands game that was on I think this morning that was just two like world-class teams just completely like at a stalemate which was so interesting to see but I think there's been some huge shocks for me um in terms of performance from both big teams and smaller teams um yeah you a lot of them didn't get off to a great start but that's that's tournament football isn't it but it's been it's been great it's um I guess another benefit for working at Faudis is that we kind of just have the TV screen on yeah. permanently. <laughs> we'll uh, be doing orders and printing orders up, but there's always something on, even if it's just a repeat. So it's been such a cool um, week. Has it been a week? I think it's been a week. So yes, yeah, it's last Thursday, didn't it? Yeah. 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 That's gone quick. That's gone quick. Who's, your, who's been your standout? Standout teams and standout players so far? Who's really um, That's a great question. I think there was a lot of um, kind of, not doubts, but kind of questions about Germany coming into the World Cup. Obviously, having, like, I think about a month and a half ago, like, having a defeat to Zambia, which nobody could have predicted. I think there's a lot of questions about that team, but they came in and absolutely smashed their first game. So I think any doubts have kind of been... Um, distilled. I also think that um, Brazil, again, came in really strong, really good start. Obviously, with it being um, Marta's last tournament, you kind of always want to root for them a little bit, even if you are, they're not your main team. Um, in terms of players, it's it's difficult because there's been a lot of good, solid like team defences. I was really impressed with Nigeria's keeper um, today in the game against Australia. I think she performed incredibly um i think it's been a good a good tournament for keepers so far good good uh, penalty saving going on there's been um, enough penalties yeah <laughs> i think there was a stat which is like the first six games there was a penalty in all six yeah which is crazy wow, wow. i think uh for me um daniela van der donk uh, and obviously that that battle that she that she had i like a little shit house player me I love Gattuso, uh, obviously Keane had elements of that about him as well. So I, I'm I'm all about that, mate. Just someone gritty that gets in people's faces. Absolutely love it. It was a bit um, bit of instant karma, though, <laughs> conceding straight away <laughs> after that, that head-to-head. But, yeah, uh, some of the performances yeah. have been absolutely class. I was, I was kind of rooting for Alessia Russo just because I've got a massive soft spot for her. But she's broken my little heart in going to yeah. Arsenal. But then yeah. again, that's just that's just United being being United and not not doing what they should do for player retention. Oh, absolutely. I don't know if you know, I'm a big fan of Brazil. So obviously, like to watch <laughs> watch Brazil and Ari Borges. I mean, to score a hat trick on your first book and when she was crying after that first goal. And then to go and score the hat trick, and then to doing the dancing, really ringing that samba feel. I thought that was an absolutely brilliant moment. So yeah, I'm really impressed with them as well. Like obviously, I know they come into the game thinking they're a bit more defensively set up, and they might be a bit more reserved. And then you just saw, you know, they brought the streets are real and a couple banner to, to the football pitch. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, but no, I've, I've really enjoyed it so far. I can't wait to see see more of it. And you know, 
Brazil or England after we we need to uh, to win it for sure. Right. <laughs> Let's, that's enough football. We don't talk football in here. That's not what we do. We talk football kit. That's what we're here for. And yeah, we've got 10 shirts that have been worn in the tournament. So at the time of recording, it's sort of just going into the second round of group games. So I've chosen one from the first round. Maybe I think there's one game maybe that has been the second round. Just cheating a little bit. I've all been worn on pitch. So we've got pictures of the shirts as I like to do. And then of them in the tournament as well, so you can see them as they are on the pitch. How did we find ranking them? Uh, good, good ten. How did they do? Okay for you? Yeah, it's a decent, yeah. decent list to be fair. Um, don't the, the, the top, you know what I mean, don't rush with the praise. It's fine. The, the top, the top three could have could have been fairly interchangeable for me because uh, I like a lot about each, each, each of them. So um, yeah, yeah, there's, um, I think. Uh, there's just a bit of um like big manufacturer bias that always I think even subconsciously I find myself like pushing lesser known brands towards the back end, but then I think, no, don't do that. Like what why are we falling for all the same marketing shit? Um but, you the other week topper was you're nowhere near your list. Now you're feeling a bit of guilt. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. But then no, I always just fall back on just the pure aesthetics and would I buy it, would I wear it, uh, would I be jealous of someone else having it um, and some of them I, I wouldn't be too bad with. Yeah. Uh, I have to, there's a disclaimer, so I apologise, none of the Adidas away shirts have yet been worn, so they're not in, the, or at the time of recording, so they've not been in the list, I do apologise because you could have been them, let, let's be honest, but a nice mix of all brands, sorry. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see how we go. And I have to say, this is probably one of the closest lists we've ever had in terms of. So there's one clear loser. I'll say that uh, it did manage to get over ten points, so that's not a bad thing. But then from ninth to first, they split by seventeen points, which doesn't happen on this show. It's normally twenties. You know, it really does get quite. Yeah, that's how close this week is, Dom. Jeez. Like the, face, the, face, the face is happening already, mate. I can see <laughs> facial expressions happening already. So, I mean, that means there's a nice mix of, of, of shirts and the pe- people ranking them in all, all types of uh, positions. But no, we'll get into it then. But before we do that, there's a couple of things you have to do. So, first of all, as always, this show is sponsored by RetroFootballKit.co.uk. And if you want to go and buy some wonderful football shirts, you can get an extra 10% off what is already 15% off site-wide using the code TALKINGKIT10. So at checkout, get an extra 10% off. People sometimes forget to use it and because you think, because you look on the website, it, it's like automatically crossed out. So you think, oh, it's done it. No, add this at checkout and get an extra 10% off. TALKINGKIT10 at checkout. Okay, so our fifth ranker is also this week is, he was on a couple of weeks ago, it was Josh Shree who works in radio, works for Radio 1, One Extra, uh, and the like. And he has, um, he's done a playlist, and this is absolutely brilliant. So he's done a playlist before, but he's done one specifically for the Women's World Cup. So oh, yeah, nice. the, name, the name is absolutely brilliant as well. I'll, I'll, I'll reveal it. So what he's done is he's put 50 songs, or it's 50 artists or 50 songs, and... Each nation is represented within this playlist. So each nation that's at the World Cup is represented in this uh, playlist. And it's, it's brilliant. I've, I've had a few listens to it. It definitely is a nice mix of artists and stuff like that. And, and Josh knows his music. He's absolutely brilliant. And the name of it, I love this, is Sheila's Wheel Ups is the name of the playlist. You remember Sheila's Wheels? <laughs> he's, he's had a little, uh, a little play on the word. Sheila's Sheila's Wheel Ups, a World Cup down under, uh, created by Josh Reeve there, like I say. So, go and have a look. Go on, it's on. It's just, so, I think he's at JJ Shreve on Twitter, at JJ Shreve, S-H-R-E-V-E, uh, and Instagram as well. So, you can find it on his Instagram and Twitter. It's on Spotify. You can go and have a listen. 50 songs. Is from, that to from, try and keep yourself awake with in the early hours? Just blast it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you... Watching them three o'clock games, this will definitely, definitely get you uh, 
dancing around the living room while you're celebrating some wonderful goals that we've seen at this World Cup. So yeah, as he's the fifth ranker this week, I said what we'll do is, because it ties in lovely with the episode, uh, we'll give you a playlist, a nice little shout out as well. So there we go. Uh, go and check it out for us. That would be absolutely brilliant. Right, let's get into this week's 10 shirts then. And at number 10, like I said, there's one shirt that's definitely last, unfortunately. Uh, 13 points overall from the rankers, so it didn't really hit the heights that maybe would have expected. I think it's actually quite a nice shirt, but I don't rank. It doesn't matter what I think. So number 10 on our list is the home shirt from Zambia. There we go. And I think it's I think it's quite nice. I like it. I like the little pattern. I think the away shirt is the same. The first shirt doesn't have it on there. Uh, let's go through the rankers then uh, that aren't here. There's three of them this week. But, so obviously there's a lot to go through. Josh, we just spoke about him. He had this one in sixth place. Jay had this one in eighth place. And he just said it's a bit too simple for him, um, which is the opposite of another shirt that we'll, we'll see later. But because he's ranked that other shirt lower, he names it. And I was like, well, I can't do that because that's giving away what shirt it is. So it's just the opposite of another shirt. It's just too simple, he says. And our good friend, Sean, says about this one. Oh, he says, high school PE lost property. Next. So I don't think he likes that one too much. <laughs> Uh, right, let's go through the rankers that are here and get their opinions because they, they matter most because they're here. They've bothered to show up, which is nice. Dom, straight away, we'll start with you. What do you think of this uh, Zambia shirt? Because you had it, it was your bottom shirt this week, unfortunately. Yeah. Tell us. Uh, high school PE kit lost property, I think, uh, <laughs> immediately. Uh, I would have bought that anyway. Um, but, I, I mean, how much credit or, you know, um, of a lambasting, can you give, you know, a manufacturer that you don't know um, in, in, you know, what will be, um, you know, representing a huge nation? Um, and I think depending on, you know, what you've done previously or, you know, tournament, um, you know, football that's been played, if that's been to any particular degree before, what do you do with it? Like, I'm not sure, you know, design-wise, what what licence they would have had um, to, to go to go crazy but um i think it's it's you know it's it's simple enough that um the at least the one design element that they've gone to put into it um yeah. points towards the you know the, the national crest as well which uh, i think is is key that we highlight you know uh, what should be the main element of a of a kit on the international stage um the actual manufacturer logo i don't know if it looks like a an eye that's squinting or like eyelashes i don't um, I, I, I reminds me of something. I can't pat it. I don't like really. it. Unlike, um, do you know, like when Pro Evolution Soccer didn't have like all the right. manufacturer stuff, and some of them you had to make yourself. This is what I'd kind of probably put together with a couple of arches to say, "Oh no, this is Puma. This one." Um, <laughs> it'd be, um, yeah, I, I'm not massive on V next, and yeah, I think uh, sim simplicity. I understand why international. Um, designers might do that, but not for me this particular one. Yeah, fair enough. So the the, the brand is Copa. Um, the away shirt is actually really a lot better, but I'm not. I don't. I'm sure. I'm not sure they wore it. So that's why I've not shown it. I don't, I don't. I could see anyway. It's green, and but the stripes are actually different colours. It's sort of I think it's black, red, and yellow. So it, it does chop up a little bit, mix up. It does look really nice. This for me, if I was to rank and say something, it's a referee shirt. It looks like someone at Peel and clean with it. It looks like an early noughties. It should have a pocket. That's, yeah, that's it should have a it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that was, that's what I would say if I was ranking, but I'm not, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I've been come to you on it as well. And you had this one in eighth place, you, similar to similar to Jay. So, yeah, what are you thinking on this, this Zambia shirt? Yeah, it's not really my favourite. Um, the crest, as you highlighted, Dom, is the, probably the key, the best part about it. And I'm kind of partial to that, like, orangey-yellow kind of colour. I think that's kind of a little bit different that you don't see very often, especially, like, you kind of dominated by blues and reds and whites, um, which I think is quite cool. And I know this isn't a font ranking show, but I do like their font. And like, I, I'm kind of a bit of a font nerd. So I think that it highlights it a little bit more for me. But yeah, the um, I'm not a V-neck person. I don't, I don't think it, 
it looks good on a kit. And I think I do agree that it's a bit referee, ref, referee styled. Um, but yeah, I just I think that there's no kind of with their with their brand again, like the the branding on it. There's no kind of brand recognition there for me, which I think is what kind of in the back of your mind it kind of ticks along anywhere. Um, so that's not something that you'd recognise. Um, but again, you can only work with what you've been assigned, I guess. But yeah, not not my not my favourite, but also not my least favourite. So. Well, yeah. no, that, that is true. It wasn't it wasn't dead last at least. So I'm sure we'll come to them soon. But unfortunately, overall, it is our. 10th place shirt this week with 13 points is the Zambia home shirt from Copa, like I say. Moving on then, and shirt number nine, 20 points. So a little jump in in terms of the points. So it tells you now we start to get quite condensed with everyone and the, the sort of rankings are, are kind of everywhere, which is brilliant to see. And it is this one, it's the away shirt from South Korea. So, so only nine points for this one. Again, I can give my opinion. I think it's quite clean, quite smart. Um, but again, I don't rank. It also doesn't look like the Nike template. So it, it gets points like that for me straight away. But I, I like that. That's the thing. But I like that it's not that, like, which is weird. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to the people that aren't here. And Sean had this one in. This was his eighth place shirt. And he says, not sure what's happened. Um, I don't know. He's talking about the next picture. So do you know what? <laughs> I'll show you the next picture, right? Um, <laughs> so, and I, I may butcher it. So is it it's Casey Fair. Is, that, is it Fair, you say? It's P H A I R S in it, I think. Yeah. Wait, so, yeah. yeah. Basically, he said, um, not sure what's happened to Casey Fair's sideways sh shins, but she wears a basic kit well. Seems very corporate. Uh, flag is welcomed addition on the sleeve, he says. Um, I, I think she just obviously ran a lot and they've obviously moved to the side. I don't think she's got I don't think that she's broken a shit. I don't think she has to protect her shins on the side, Sean. I'm not sure that's what's happened. <laughs> um, but, you know, it is Sean, which we know all about. And Jay had this one in... I'm not struggling, I know I am. Uh, Jay had this one in... Where did he put it? He's put it in third. Uh, just... Just, but see, he just put just the Nike template, but the added colour makes it clean and resemble the flag well. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, obviously, Casey Fair being the youngest ever person to play at the Women's World Cup as well. So, absolutely, hats off to that. Round of applause. Uh, right, let's get into the rankings. No, Josh is here as well. And he's put this in 10th place, which is shocking, Josh, I have to say, because it's a lot better than, than their 10th place shirt. Uh, Abin, we'll come to you next on this one and it was seven for you so one place higher than than the previous shirt it's all white I, what not all right all white and i know yeah. south korea are known for really hitting you in the face with with some of their shirts what was your thoughts on on this effort from south korea yeah i i think it's it's clean it's a nice like clean jersey i think when they do that kind of crest that they've done for this kit it always looks quite different which I quite like and I again I like that it's not a Nike like the it is a Nike template kit but it's a not the World Cup Nike yeah. template kit um yeah you look at some of the others and you're just like you have just copied and pasted that but this is kind of a little bit different and again it has it has a like a, a crew neck basically a round neck on it which I like I like the little black trims which I think is smart and I, I like a side panel on a shirt but I think that there's something a little bit off about the balance between this blue and red i don't know i don't know i could pinpoint what it was but um it's just something again and again not to be a font nerd but the the font's really nice i really like it it's clean you can be you can be a font nerd all you like yeah. <laughs> so everything is welcomed on talking kit and forfeit rankings uh so there we go because oh it changes on the other side doesn't it so it's red yeah at the top on the other. all right okay oh, that's, that's nice to know um Dom, we'll finish off with you on this one. And it was in seventh place for you also. What are your thoughts on this shirt, please, mate? Well, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna try and look like one international team, it's gotta be USA, hasn't it? If that's gonna give you a bit of a winning mentality, it screams USA for me. Um, and I hate that. Um, because the the obviously that that crest that they use is is easily one of the best in world football 
Uh, it's absolutely dynamite. I think the the kind of differing uh, block block of colour on the side panels. I'm not mad keen on that. I'd prefer if it was completely symmetrical, but it does add a, a completely different flavour to it. And uh, obviously, you know, if you're viewing it on pitch, uh, whether at home or in a stadium, it'd be good to get them flashes of more of a bold red or more of a bold blue as well. So uh, a good bit of a juxtaposition there. And the, you know, the national flag being on the sleeve always looked really good as well. So yeah, uh, loads to like about it. Clean as a whistle. Uh, I'm not mad on the font, Arden. I, I won't lie. Um, I'd prefer like a more boxy, like varsity style one, but that's just just personal preference. But yeah, um, I think as a as a whole kit as well, to get all white to look good, you do need something quite bold. So going with the side panels seems like the uh, sensible thing to do. Fair, absolutely fair. Ninth place then for South Korea and their away shirt from the World Cup. 20 points from our rankers this week. Okay then, shirt number eight, and lovely guys, we're coming a bit closer to home uh, for, for some of you. And unfortunately, in eighth place, we have 22 points. It is the England home shirt. It's or... the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, what, that's where I thought you were going when you said, if you're going to look like a team in white, I thought you were going to say England, and you went USA. Well, he does look like USA, you yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, our rankers aren't here. Uh, Josh had this one in seventh place. Jay had this one in seventh as well. He's put dead simple, not really a fan. And Sean had this one in seventh place. Where are you putting it seven? Oh, this this one made me laugh because it goes the way. Obviously, I put everyone's names. It goes seven six seven six seven. So <laughs> obviously, you two guys have obviously put it in sixth place. But Sean just say uh, not a strong attempt. In comparison with the previous kit, not blown away, but suppose it does a job. Well, it's meant to do a job, it's been a football kit, exactly that. Dom, we'll start with you on this one, please, mate. And it, as I've already said, it, it was your sixth place shirt this week. Given some of the wonderful shirts, the, the one you're wearing that Arvin's got in the background as well, and previous ones to that, you think about the one in, in the Euros, and it just looks like it's attempting to be that. Total 90, 2002, 2004 template, which a lot of people don't like. Do you, do you think they've, they've missed nailing another banger that they, sh they really should have tried? Yeah, but, but literally, you know, I, like, I'm like i in love with that Lionesses shirt from the Euros. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think it's it's easily like, like one of, I don't, I, I try and think Euro 96 comes possibly close to tailored by umbro peter savile 2011 just because of how it feels on he's gorgeous but i think vi as a visual stimulant obviously with the kind of iridescent uh crest um or oh, i i look I, I don't think you can top that so where they were going to go with this i don't know um so th they realistically could only come to something a bit more a bit more safe look it, it, no one's gonna top nigeria in in putting a bold shirt out and then going, I'll tell you what, we'll we'll do that again next year, but add a bit more spice to it, and then and do it a year after as well, and then just go. Um, so yeah, I think it, it comes with its pitfalls when you're trying to follow something so so iconic. Um, this is always going to seem far too safe in comparison, but there's there's obviously good hanger appeal with the you know with the with the lettering or the typeface within the the yoke or the inside neck. Um, and I, I like the T90 kind of throwback plus uh, on that typeface and uh, font element. Um, the throwback for this current font is one from, I think, 2013, 14 anyway, a font that they used previously. Uh, I would have probably know more about that than I would. But um, yeah, look, I, I'm always going to I'm always going to like it seeing, seeing the lionesses in it. But yeah, a bit, bit too safe overall. Try not to cry with Alessia in, in the background. Don't, 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 upset you at all. don't honestly hurt. Do you know? It, it sounds really bad. But I had, I had to unfollow on Instagram because it was it was it really got to me a little bit. Like, <laughs> do you know? It's one of those like all of a sudden, you know, the favorite player for United and all like following a and a career and stuff, and then to see you buzzing about joining Arsenal, I can't I can't do that. It's hard enough following Ian Wright, and and I love Ian Wright. But then, you know, he's one of them. That's a, sorry, Alessia, if you're watching. I don't know if you're bored. But oh, um, 
Did I see Helen had printed um, a shirt that Ian Wright was wearing this week? Yeah, so we, um, we've we done Ian's kits for him for two seasons now, so this has been the second. We did his Arsenal kits for him last year, and he kind of came to us and was like, don't trust anyone else with my England shirts. Give me six Wobben Moy shirts. So <laughs> we did those, and we've done a couple of um, of the really nice Addy Away kits um, for him. So who knows? That must, be, might, must right? be so good because he's such a huge advocate uh, for, for the women's game um, and, and highlighting, you know, not just this cause but you know a ton of others as well and he's got such a good platform and i think he's so well respected um as, as a player but you know more so as a person now at this stage of course absolutely absolutely uh, i realize josh has also sent a little blurb for each shirt as well which I'll, i've forgotten so i will have to read them because it's nice uh he's put this for this one the simple night kits really do lack any inspiration but i do respect the clean cut kit Personal bias and being used to boring clean cut England kits probably puts this ahead of one shirt I'm not going to say and then South Korea for him. So that's why he's put it in in, in seventh place. Uh, Arvin, let's finish off with you on this one. And again, you know, you had this one in sixth place. So what for you could have maybe done better to really make this shirt just smack you in the I face? Think that there, there was like with with the um the Euros kit there was kind of a whole story about it and there was like a theme around it whereas they've tried to say that there is a theme around this one the fact that I can't remember what it is and I work in football kits is very telling like I just don't know I can't remember. I can tell you what the away theme was but the um the home theme I I just can't tell you um it's again it's a it's a Nike template kit it's 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 disappointing especially after the Euros. I think even if they'd have just put like an iridescent badge on it, that would be kind of sick. Um, maybe in a different colorway. I remember saying last year, Rose, if they'd made that that iridescent badge a bit like like red instead of blue, I think that would have been really sick. But um, it, it, I didn't really like it until I saw it in person. This kit, um, the sleeves have a little gradient of the blue. You can't really see it in any of the photos, which kind of sucks. But when you see it up close, all around like the sleeve cuff is is this kind of blue gradient, which looks really cool up close. And I will say that the um, the dry fit vapor versions of these, so like the player one ones, are so much nicer looking than the regular stadium fit. Because um, Nike have done this whole piece about sustainability, and the badges on them are all made from old like trainer scraps, t-shirt scraps. You can really see that on the away on the like the dry fit kits. Um, whereas these, you can't really see it as much. And I think like when you make a kit. You think about like your broad market you're not going to have somebody who's paying every single time the higher end price you're going to have people that are getting the stadium on so you have to get it right with the stadium where i just don't think we've gotten it right this time um but i will give us a, a pat on the back for using blue shorts which is a yeah. huge piece in the in the women's game and not going for the white shorts again um which i'm glad that we've done and it looks nicer with the blue in my opinion well, yeah absolutely i agree with that so there we go england and their home shirt 22 points coming eight on our list this week. Okay, shirt number seven and 25 points from our rankers. And it is this. It's the France home shirt. I knew he was going to pull a face. The French home oh. shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, it's only come in seventh place at 25 points. Like I say, Josh had this one in, he had it in eighth place. And this was the other shirt he said on the previous one that I didn't want to mention. Uh, he says, uh, this should be better. It's got more detail than the England kit, but for what reason? The painted on cuffs look naff. That kind of art on shirt often does. Plus, the random minute detailing on the rest of the shirt doesn't really do much. Okay. And we'll go through to Sean. And Sean had this one in... He had this one in fifth place, uh, middle of the road for him. And he says, I like it, but needs a number in the middle of the shirt, like the wax crayon effect on cut. Okay, fair enough. And Jay had it. This is probably why you, you um, it's come so low, because Jay's had it in 10th place. Um, what? what are you doing, Dave? Well, let me, let me tell you, and, and then you'll find out why. He says, horrible base pattern and colour, and the painted sleeve cuffs. See, I, 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 do I say this word? Dutter. I don't know who he thinks he is. He thinks he's Fuji Banton or someone. What's going on? Dutter. 
<laughs> that's a really that's a really nice ne- uh, reference there. So I apologize if anyone doesn't know who Buju Bannon is. Uh, okay, let's go through the rankers that are here. Let's get their thoughts on it. And uh, Alvin, let's start with you on this one. It was your fifth place shirt along along with um, with, with Sean this week. I mean, the last shirt. You know, we go back. We talk about England and their last shirt for the Euros was fantastic. The last France shirt was also for me one of the one of the standout shirts for the last four or five years. I think it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, so for you, is this again another letdown? If they missed the trick and maybe not progress forward, do you may have hoped? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the Euros one was beautiful. Like, I will not allow myself to wear a France shirt, but if it was going to be anyone, it would be that, that Euros <laughs> kit. But this is just a bit, it's just a bit meh. It's like, I don't associate, when I think of France shirts, I don't think of this kind of light, blue i think are kind of a little bit darker like yeah. kind of the one that's on the the collar there um mm-hmm. is probably what i'd associate with france i like controversy to the the rest but i like the the cuffs i like them i think they're cool um i i don't mind it it adds a bit more color to it rather than having what would be just like the alternative which i think would just be like a dark blue cuff um i think it gives it something and it kind of it gets the like the patriotism of the tricolor is kind of there um for the french people which which i think is always cool and i don't quite know how to feel about like having the badge in like a little shield i don't i don't think it looks great for this one i think if they'd have just left it without the shield and not had that big block of white on the front i think it would look great but it does look cool with the font and the font on the back especially has like this cool kind of texture um yeah, you can't really see. Like it, again, it doesn't photograph well, but it has this really cool texture in the back of the, on the back of the shirt on the on the number specifically. But I think it's it's clean. It's just a bit of a letdown compared to last shows. Yeah, I, I stand with you on that. I think it's the wrong color for a French shirt. France is deep, deep dark, dark blue. Mm. Uh, also, as well, I know it does. It won't, but it it, it feels like, it looks like I feel like colder oil. I'm, uh, the corduroy, do you know what I mean? I just it feels like oh, no. it feels furry. Yeah, I just thought oh, I feel like it touches it, it, it makes your skin skin crawl or something like that. Maybe I don't know. Like the, um, the stadium versions don't kind of have it woven in, so it's just kind of like a, a sublimated, just like yeah. it would just feel like a regular shirt. But the the vapor versions do, and it just feels like almost like crepe paper. It's so <laughs> weird. No. Don't enjoy it. <laughs> the um, Netherlands one, especially the Netherlands home, looks exactly like corduroy, like orange corduroy. Oh, oh no! So Dom, let's come to you because this was your second second place shirt. You really are a fan of it, mate. I I do I, like I, I really like it. Other than the the hue, which I, I do agree with, um, it it not necessarily evoking images that we would normally associate with a a typical a typical French shirt but then you know they're not they're not bound by one particular color and you know we've seen variations across uh, nations and clubs previously but um I think this kind of chalky side paneling um and I think the 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 Netherlands one as well it's it's too like um like baby like a like a soft to- like too much of a soft tone um, but then you know if I look at it objectively maybe that does then you know bring the crest to a bit more prominence and that shield that I love I love old school like badges with crests uh, well um you know shields around them uh, and I think the match detailing underneath it as well um you know stands out there's a good contrast with the kind of design element on the um neck for which we saw on the England shirt and it you know it, it didn't look as good as this with this kind of you know it, it kind of gestures towards the uh, you know the flag pattern on the sleeves so I think there's there's good pointed elements of it in which you know if I'm looking as a you know as a as an international um highlight what I'd want to see it is those elements that I'd want my eye to be drawn to um rather than <laughs> rather than blue corduroy um so yeah I get I get that um but yeah I think um I saw we had this as a one of the leaks and I liked it even when it was like blurred luckily yeah. now that it's in full HD it still looks blurred <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I went with my gut at the time, and I, I, I've continued to like it as well. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's um, come so low. 
Yeah. Also, just notice as well, the, the trickle doesn't go all the way around as well. That's a bit. Of a That's a performance thing. We know that. Um, yeah. But yeah. It, yeah, it is. It is fucking annoying. <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. But it is it's a, overall, it is, it is a nice show. I have to say. Uh, also, I, have to, I agree with you. The match detailing, you know, too often it's it's always put centralised in between, you know, the swoosh and, and the, ba- the badge crest. I, the fact it there looks it looks very very smart. I add a bit to it. Anyway, there we go. Enough rambling from me. It's France and their home shirt, and that's come seventh on our latest week with 25 points. Moving on to shirt number six and 27 points for this one. It is the home shirt for... When it comes, it has to come up. It's Morocco. And their home shirt this week. And our rankers have placed it in the following positions. Uh, for Sean. Sean had this second place. This is his second place shirt. Uh, and he says about it, this is a love or hate it kit. At first, I thought, disgusting, he said. <laughs> I should have said disgusting. Why have I done that? And <laughs> then flips and love it. It's late 80s, early 90s vibes, he's saying for him. Uh, and Jay had this one in, he said this one. He's put this one in fifth place. And he says, decent design, colour, slightly annoying though. And then our good friend Josh has put this one in. I'll find it. Yeah, he's put it in third place, Josh. Don't usually love V-Nex, but this this one is thick uh, and nice and nice green. One, uh, it's it's very purposeful. Love the national emblem too. Proper good, he says. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Dom come to you on this one next and your eighth place shirt you're not really feeling this one why is that no when i don't i don't like v-necks at the best time but when the v-neck is the the main point going oh look at me i'm a v-neck like i hate i can't act that uh the crest looks like it's um obviously welling up uh, because it's having the attention taken away from it. it looks like a tear rolling down its face um i think uh, the the kind of redeeming feature would be the the Puma logo, which obviously, like a, if you see like a Nike logo, like the Futura one with with the word mark underneath it, I think it just like it does like it does make you think this could definitely be from 1982, uh, and I wouldn't I wouldn't know any different other than maybe feeling that awful Puma ultra weave fabric, which is um, not too dissimilar to like that crepe paper or like a hospital like scrubs gown thing. Um, yeah. Not a massive fan, yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to look at that Puma logo. King is the first thing I think of. Oh, yes. Puma King straight away. Uh, shout out to Puma, though. They're bringing that back, aren't they? Uh, the Javi Simons is uh, wearing Puma King now, apparently. I've uh, seen the advert the other day. But really good. So, yeah, big up uh, Puma for bringing the King back. Uh, Arvin, let's come to you. Lastly, on, on this one. And you had this one in 10th place. This was your 10th place shirt this week. What, what is it about yeah. this one? He wasn't he wasn't feeling. No, it just gives Christmas vibes, which I don't think is like <laughs> is what you want in a football game. Right? Elves and knocking yeah. about. <laughs> it's like okay, green and red, but also the gold as well. It's just like <laughs> I don't think it's it. Um, yeah, and so that for me, just that instantly was just like no, uh, V-neck, which I hate. I also like again, unpopular opinion. Don't like. The word mark in the in the logo i think it looks so much cleaner when you've just got like the recognizable like like for a brand if you can be identified as something without your lo- like your name in it that's huge which i think puma can and it just kind of takes something away for it for me um i yeah again i've only just seen it with the green shorts as well and i just no it's really <laughs> it's really not doing anything for me and i also the pattern in it, yeah it's like they're about to start singing carols the pattern in it is not the one for me um that looks like a christmas tree pattern to me now you say it it does look look a bit like a christmas tree it's almost it's almost like the adidas shirt as well the zebra look which Mm. no i mean yeah so it's not one present 
that album will be getting under the tree this year for sure. It is sad that the Morocco shit. I have to throw a Christmas twenty minutes. Moroccan around the Christmas tree, yeah. Moroccan around the Christmas tree. Oh, you smashed it. You absolutely smashed it. <laughs> it's the Morocco shirt. It's their home shirt as well, and it's come fifth. Uh, no, sixth on our list this week with. 27 points right we've got two shirts that are neck and neck now both joint fourth with 29 points at uh, the pair of them i split them up by putting the one i like least bottom four we're going to see that first unfortunately uh, so 27 uh, 29 points like i say and it is this it's the switzerland home shirt uh, again by puma um with the old school logo. Don, we're clearly old uh, because we're reminiscing about Puma being on there. The rankers are here. Sean had this one in fourth place and he said about it. He says, uh, enjoy looking at the big mountains underneath the shirt. Uh, with two mountain emojis. Thank you, Sean. Uh, lovely pinstripes. Jay had this one in, oh, this was Jay's number one shirt, everyone. Um, no, it's not. I thought that. I've had that. I've right. got that. So, no, yeah. It, it was Jay's number one shirt. I am lying to you all. Sorry. Uh, got a bunch of personality using the Swiss Alps for inspo and lovely pinstripes, dotted pattern, resembles uh, map graphics. Someone's a map nerd, I think. Uh, the, <laughs> the graphics and all the maps. Um, uh, and Josh had this one in ninth place. Cool to incorporate the mountains, uh, but pretty rubbish over than that. Okay, fair enough, Josh. Uh, let's go to the rankers that are here. Let's speak to them and find out what they like about it and what they may not. Dom, uh, start, no, Alban, let's start with you, sorry, on this one. Uh, it was ninth for you as well on your list. Yeah. You know, um, it's not Christmas this time. It's just, just very red. Um, which I guess is a, a Swiss staple. Um, I like I like the mountains. I'm not gonna lie, I did not know that that's quite what they were, which makes me look silly because I haven't done my kit research. But I don't know. I, I, I will talk about this a bit later with a different shirt. But central badges for me are like the best thing in the world. But this is just too much going on centrally. It's like you've got the really cool Swiss like kind of crest that they always use and i love that but then you've also got the flag and the puma with the word mark in and there's just a lot going on in a kind of chest region which i don't think is is cool and then i get kind of looking from the match pictures i don't think they're wearing any of the kind of match detailing um thing and if they are i can't really see it which i think is always a bit of a shame when they can't really they don't wear it um yeah, it, it's clean. It's not a V-neck, which is a cool thing. And I like the kind of, the white cuffs are cool. Again, on the neck, it looks like that doesn't go all the way around, which no. is a shame. But yeah, other than that, it's it's clean. It's just not, it's just doing a lot for me here, which I don't like. <laughs> so despite the mountains, it kind of falls flat, you would say, for you, yeah? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, Dom? I mean, for me, that looks more like Santa Claus than the previous one. Does that look like a Santa Claus? That's very Isn't that a big chunky collar? That's why. It it's like a yeah. beard. And the yeah. I also, for, for me, I, the fact they use the two the, the two badges always really gets me. And like you say, if you want to centralize it, it just, it's all, it's all up in the neck. You know, bring it down a little bit, space it out. It's too, it's too condensed. It's really not for me. Oh, well, Dom, for you, it was in your top three. You are a map nerd. Oh, yeah, big big cartographer for me. Um, yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I couldn't remember anything after year eight geography. So, yeah, uh, nothing to do with that. Uh, I think the reference is good. The reference point is good because, obviously, we're seeing um, across a lot of the Adidas, like, kind of, um, like, element uh, style that they're doing from you know from the rainforest through to deserts and skies and everything else and we're kind of going oh wow that's amazing uh, i don't see why that isn't the case here uh, the pinstriping which is broken up with little crosses as well um to again reference the the badge the 
the uh, kind of first aid badge that they've got on there, which is always class, I think, because it's such an anomaly in, in respect to like typified like national crests to see on to see on a shirt in that in that vein. And it's such a big contrast to that kind of futuristic looking one, one on, on the opposite side of the Puma logo. Um, I think there's there's tons to like about it. So yeah, I, I, I applaud them for having a go. But yeah, I don't think it all being clumped up here is necessarily too good for a visual uh, element um, kind of at this angle or even further away. I can't imagine you'd be able to make too much of it out, which it surprises me that a manufacturer like Puma would would allow that to happen. Mm. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah, one thing, obviously, with that second pass that they like to have, at least it always has a big plus to one of the shirts as well. So, you know. I can cut that out. Oh, uh, I do, because you're making yeah. me cry. Oh, okay. Fair enough. There we go, then. That's uh, Switzerland's home shirt, joint fourth on our list this week. 29 points overall from the rankers. Moving on to the second shirt. And I'm a big fan of this one. Really glad it's come up high on our list. And it is this. It's the Philippines away shirt. And our rankers have placed it in the following places. Jay had this one in sixth place. And he says, it's all right, isn't it? Not bad. Not unreal. Okay, fair enough. Sean had this one in... Sean had this one. I got this one in third place, Sean, and he says, a basic but smart collar and cuffs elevate the shirt along with the graphic. And then Josh had this one in fourth place, so he's kind of got it spot on this week, and he says, it doesn't blow me away, but I like the different shades of blue, giving a more abstract feel while remaining classy. Looks better with a number on the front, for sure. Uh, Dom, come to you on this one. And ninth place, you're not really. Mate, I'm, I'm, literally, I'm all over the gap this week. Um, you're doing it. We're doing a Sean this week. You know. Um, yeah, I think it's just a bit too team wear for me. That that kind of graphic looks dated. It looks like something Nike were doing ten years ago. Um, okay. And given given what you know visually we've seen uh, from Adidas of late. Uh, it just seems a bit of a letdown. Obviously, I understand if it is that you know they're not necessarily going to sell as many, or um, they're, they're not going to be viewed as favourably as some of the nations. They might not give them a bespoke design, but they've given a design. So why not give them a better design? Uh, from my mm -hmm. point, uh, love the love the national flag on the sleeve. Though, to be fair, yeah, very nice. Couldn't find just a um, ghost mannequin of this year either. Unfortunately, this is the best picture I could find. Arben finishing off with you on this one then and it was your fourth place shirt as well so you, you kind of hit the nail on the head are you agreement with some of the comments made or do you use it a really nice effort from adidas um i think it's really interesting because i think there's a huge campaign around the adidas um kind of away shirts and the game was the first time i saw this there's been kind of a lack of push um on this shirt particularly, which I think is, is a real letdown because there's people in the Philippines, I know from speaking to people in like the women's football community, that the entire country is behind them and everyone was so ecstatic that they scored that first ever World Cup goal, um, which I think is a real a real shame that Adidas kind of haven't capitalised on that, even if that's by not providing them a, 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 a bespoke design, but also by not pushing it. Um, I, I think it's a smart kit. I'm in agreement with the, the comments about the cuffs and the collars. I think there's a really cool trick with what they've done. The, the kind of Adidas font that's used at the minute is um, got that little kind of cutout. Uh, you can see it in the seven. It's also got that in the stripe of that shirt on that like kind of right hand side as you're looking at it now. It's got the same kind of cut, which I think is really, really smart. Um, but I think for a non bespoke Adidas kit, it's it's clean. It looks it looks good. And I think that the, like the colorway is just quite, quite cool. I agree. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of it. And it has come fourth on our list, obviously, after that fantastic win against New Zealand. Um, had to put it in there just because it's such a... What, what we love the World Cup for, it? We, we like the big nations doing the big things and um, bringing that attacking football, but 
let's be honest, we like it when the smaller nations do get them upset and shake it up a little bit and, and stir the pot. That's what we're here for. So there we go. Philippines fourth on our list, our joint fourth with Switzerland, 29 points overall. Right. Let's go to our top three, separated by three points only this week. It really is, really is a close race. I'm really happy that it's, you know, I can then, uh, in terms of the top. Okay, 35 points overall for our next year. Bit, bit sad for me this time. Uh, it is. It's the Brazil home shirt. I'm happy it's got so. I, I didn't think it would. Brazil shirts always seem to get a bad rap. They all look the same. It's the same two colours, this, this, and this, whatever. And they always come come a bit lower when it comes out to full kit rankers usually. Uh, so to get third, I'm more than more than happy with that. Uh, let's go through the rankers that aren't here. And Josh had this one in. This is his second place shirt. So Josh can definitely come again. And he said, it would be too easy to put this first, but this is a close second. Uh, yes, it's clean and simple, but Brazil often is. Uh, they really reinvent the wheel. I prefer the yellow of another nation, which we'll mention soon, uh, to the more saturated near pastel like yellow and green on this particular Brazil shirt. Okay, fair enough. That's fine. That's uh, some good um, commentary there from another friend, Josh. And Sean had this one in sixth place and he just says lovely as a kit iconic colors as you'd imagine and i'm not going to fall out with, with jay no i'm not actually that's fine he's put it in fourth place as well and he says cool but a weird can i copy your homework but change it slightly with the men's uh kit i, I hear what you're saying everything but they're both great shirts so it doesn't really matter uh, but change it. okay uh the rank is that here, yeah, Adam, let's start with you on this one. And it was your third place shirt this week. So, again, well done. You seem to have got it spot on. What are your thoughts on, on this Brazil shirt? It's it's a classic. It's like you can't really go wrong with a Brazil shirt. Um, I think, and I might be wrong, but I think I read an article about it the other day. Um, it's the first time they've used um, the crest without the five stars above. Um which is really cool. And I think that's it's it's a time that they start kind of doing that and reflecting that they're kind of their own entity as well as being part of like the Brazil national team. Um, I think uh, you can't quite see it in the kind of ghost mannequin photos, but they have this kind of underlying fern pattern going through, um, which is so sick and such a like a, a like a small detail, which really elevates it for me um, and just makes it look very clean. But I, I like the I like this kind of yellow and green this this version of the yellow and green I think it looks really smart. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was a bit of a oh that's a bit different of the lighter shade of green and the really vibrant vibrant yellow. John, we'll come to you and you had it fifth. I remember was it Stan was saying when we were talking about the Brazil shirts that he likes it a little bit deeper and you know just harking back to those you know. 1970 and 82 teams and everything like that. How do you feel about the sort of more vibrant out there combination that Brazil have, have gone with for these, these kits? Yeah, I'd, I'd consider myself a bit more of a traditionalist for that particular nation. Um, oh, come on. Um, but then you see how how joyous uh, like Brazil are as a nation and the fans are and their football is and then you think, well, you know why why would it need to be a bit more of a dull shade of uh, of yellow why can't yeah. it be as vibrant as this as long as they don't go you know the whole are going to get a bit like toxic colored then it's fine but i think um this little you know with with that particular font as well um uh, which is carried through uh, across the men's and, and the women's uh, is is really really good it looks joyous it looks uh, fun as well so it fits fits in really nicely and i think even you know, as much as I don't like V-neck, that particular um, type of that name set or uh, number set, sorry, works well in that that kind of arches down much as the you know the last uh, font kind of mirrored the design element as well on the on the previous shirt. I think things like that tie in really well, and I think that I like that kind of consistency or synergy across. And then you've got you've got these softer elements of the fern as well, which are a nice touch. Um, but I, I, again. You know how how prominent that will be on the replica version to the you know the drive advance or, or or the other version you know we've seen more recently that's becoming more and more of a gripe for consumers 
Um, so yeah, I think uh, yeah, overall, it's typically Brazil. It's uh, I think it's going to go down well. I'd be interested to know off Arben as well what you know if um, if it is that we, you know we see that Fowdy's a, a you know sending shirts worldwide. Obviously, everyone's kind of joining in now and, and getting stuff for this particular World Cup. But are you seeing any kind of favourites? Is this um, obviously because of the hype around Marta and her being, you know, widely recognised as one of the greatest women footballers or greatest footballers ever? Um, are there any particular nations that you see being more popular this time round? Oh, it's interesting you say that about like uh, the kind of Marta name sets and stuff. This has been one that we've been trying to get hold of for like years, like since the entire time we've been a company, um, we had a kind of, everyone was tagging us in this tweet being like, where can we get a Marta like name set? Why can I get a Neymar one, but not a Marta one? And it's like, we we can't figure it out either. And it, we got told that we can't export outside of Brazil. And then we got told today that actually we may be able to export outside of Brazil. So fingers crossed that we can all get a Marta shirt. And I can confirm the ferns are prominent on the stadium ones as well. So um but i think like obviously england has been huge um we have a primary like primarily um uh, well i was gonna say we have primarily an english audience but we we do a lot of international um kind of content creation a lot of orders go out there um but you see people from like all over the world buying a lot of england shirts and the england away shirt has been like it's just sold yeah. an immense amount um uh, I think Australia, even, Australia home has been huge, huge for yeah. us. Yes, yeah, it's, it's suspect it will be the yeah. England, the England away, even with the with the naughty word in it um, that I've seen people make reference to. Oh, I don't I mean, think I've seen this. Oh, once, seen it. once you do see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> Uh, now, I, I don't mind having a potty mouth, but I'm not saying that word on this show. Oh, is that bad? Yeah, don't say that. I can cut it out. It's fine. It's not, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, you, don't, you don't normally hold back. <laughs> okay. Uh, fair enough. Anything else you'd like to say about Brazil? No. no. Okay, fair enough. Well, there we go then. Shirt number three on our list this week. Um, the greatest nation. For me, uh, obviously, and the potential winners of, of the Women's World Cup, which we all want, I'm sure, uh, is Brazil and 35 points for them this week. Okay, we've got two shirts left, separated by one single point. This is how close oh. it came this week, honestly, one point. Um, and yeah, this is going to be good or bad, I think, for someone. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see, won't we? We'll see very, very soon. The second place shirt with. 37 points from our rankers this week. It is this. It's the home shirt from... Pause, pause, pause. Canada. Uh, yeah, there you go. The home shirt from Canada. I mean, look at that. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, like I say, 37 points from our rankers this week. Uh, going through the rankers that aren't here before we get to the ones that are. And hearing their thoughts. Sean had this. This was Sean's number one shirt this week. And he said, Shattered Ice Effects with the Maple Leaf is mesmerizing and befitting of a Canada shirt. Also, the best crest of the 10. Powerful colors mean business, he says. And Jay had this one in in eighth place. And oh, if you remember. Oh, do you know what? He didn't. He had it in ninth place. He had it in ninth place. And it says, I remember earlier said is when the Zambia shirt it said opposite of another shirt it's too simple it's opposite the Zambia shirt was opposite of this and he's saying there's too much going on that's literally all he said now I don't I'm not I'm not here to have a go at anyone but he works for football shirts right he needs to think of a career change if he thinks you know I'm just saying I'm just saying uh, and uh, Josh had this one in got it, got it in fifth place and he says I actually don't really like this but I'm putting it higher because I respect the attempt to integrate the iconic leaf patterns throughout the shirt looks better from far away oh, okay fair enough uh, let's go to the rankers that are here Dom we'll start with you on this one my friend and it was number one for you this week yes it is yeah uh, 
I, I love the fact that he's got too much going on. He's too busy. Um, it's absolutely class, and I think it's it's so it's it's not good to see because there shouldn't be any disparity across across any kind of team. But I think what we've seen with like the the kind of the men's team and how Nike have slapped their asses and they've had a big dispute and they've not had any kind of kind of design features at all. I just love the fact that you know the, the women have got this um, and. It, it is absolutely class. I think uh, this is my one shirt of the tournament I'd take over over any of the others. Um, and I think even that kind of split collar, which you know we've seen on previous shirts, even just in this episode, that doesn't work because there's those dark elements yeah. of the maple leaf within the shirt. That kind of just kind of fits in with it all. Uh, and I think it I think it ties really well. The kind of geometric thing can. You know, it could seem a little bit tired at this point, but this is that bold that um, you kind of, you know, you kind of get looped back into it again. Uh, I think it's absolutely stunning. Uh, but, yeah, definitely uh, top of my list. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And unmistakably a kind of a shirt, as you can imagine. It, for some reason, it's, I'm not a geek out a little bit. It's very Star Wars. Like, Darth Vader, like, red lightsaber and I, I i love that don't get me wrong like i just think i just think it, it's fantastic uh Arvin, let's finish off with you on this one it was um what's your placement you put this one in second place uh for you so again spot on this week well done congratulations it's just it is a fantastic a fantastic football show yeah it's beautiful it's it, we're so used to seeing canada play and like i i know we discussed nike template kits like uh, for like korea and england but we used to seeing what would be a team wear grassroots nike kit for canada whereas i think this is just so out of the box and so completely diff like just different from what they've had before and i love a, like a hidden not a hit it's not really hidden but a hidden maple leaf in the shirt is just so sick my only like it's just so hard to get i can't get hold of this like we couldn't stock any we weren't given we weren't allocated any by nike so like it's just so hard to get a hold of which is a shame because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful kit. Well, there we go then. Second place this week, 37 points overall. It's the kind of the home shirt. We've got one shirt left then, our number one this week with 38 points. And this is what I mean. We're so used to shirts getting well within the 40s that win. The fact, you know, the winning shirt is, is not even reached 40 points kind of tells you the story of how loved all bar one of these shirts were by the rankers this week. I think it was spread quite evenly throughout all the shirts which is great because it just shows that there's you know some absolutely fantastic shirts within this world cup and that's what we're here for because we love football shirts uh so yeah number one then this week 38 points overall it is this it's the sweden home shirt from adidas so let's go through the rankers uh, that aren't here let's get their thoughts on this one and jay had this one in second place and he says Clean Adidas kit, central badges, uh, lovely blue accents, can't go wrong. Josh had this one in, where did he have this one? This was his number one shirt, and he says, love the centralised emblem and bold colours. It makes that new Adidas logo not look horrendous for once. You, you're wrong, you're absolutely wrong uh, on that one, because it's, it's fantastic. And Sean had this one in... Obviously, some, someone, someone had to let the side down. He had it in ninth place, and <laughs> <clears throat> he's, he's got a pun as well. I, I apologise, Adam. Please don't be offended. He's, he's a, he's a uh, <laughs> Send that stock of shirts home. Um, <laughs> Colours aren't attractive. Bad template look. Suppose it does look better as a full kit uh, on the teller. What's uh, going on? Okay, uh, let's go through the rankers that are here then. And we'll start with you, Dom, on this one, because uh, it was your fourth place shirt. That's what I was trying to tell you earlier. But it's your fourth place shirt. Tell us, please, what you thought about this Sweden home shirt. Mate, there's so, like, it was because I, I think I pretty much already had my top three set. And I, I, did, yeah. I was reluctant to veer away from it. And as you'll know, uh, this was put in as a late entry into the list well, yeah. we did have another shirt in there yeah. 
We but know. then we felt we felt there was maybe good reason to get yeah. get the Sweden shirt in there, which we can come what on. I have to pull you on something because the other last week when I put a late shirt in, you were moaning. Like, oh, yeah, but, it's, oh, it's gonna win, gonna be fifty points. Yeah, but you you just you just did that out of out of sheer um, kind of FOMO or uh, like I, I, I dare say you'd done it out of hipsterness because you saw it all over Twitter. But oh, I've got to put it in. At least mine was more sensitive to to our guest and thinking, oh, you know, we're missing a trick here if we don't put a Sweden shirt in. Um, so yeah, I've got a better reason for, for asking yeah, for the excuse. You've got a better excuse. That's what you're. <laughs> well, well, it, obviously, it's, it's knocked mine out of top spot. Um, but I, I can't even really be mad at it because it is. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous like yellow. It's yeah. almost like virgin on gold, and then that that crest which you can guarantee is much larger than a load of the other crests it's slap bang in the middle it's the main feature obviously it's a template but it's done well the the accents the lighter blue tie in really well with the crest as well uh the navy's you know a bit more subdued by comparison um and i, I think has it got a pinstripe in it as well oh come on talk to me yes it's it may I can't be mad that it's come number one, and uh, obviously, given our guest as well, I'm I'm quite happy it's come number one. I no, still, no. obviously, if you can get hold of that Canada shirt, though, Abbott, let me know because I desperately want one. I I desperately want one too. <laughs> I'll fight for it. I think Helen might be bringing me back one from Australia if she can get her hands on it. So, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I tell you what else, though. What else slaps for me? The crest. In every Panini sticker book, when you get a shiny virgin, a vir virgin, shiny version <laughs> of the the Sweden crest, it's absolutely unbelievable. That the, yeah. the blue, yeah. the blue and the yellow, it, it, a, a color combination that I absolutely love. Obviously, Brazil is one uh, that use that color combination, but Sweden again, it's just absolutely fantastic. So we will finish off with Arvin on this one. Um, I didn't, and I didn't. Um, I didn't want to lose to the fact that it's straight just for you. I was going to skate over it, but someone wanted his part. Yeah, to be because because I, I want like I want to know I want to know the story. Obviously, there's going to be one. Um, I, I, mean, I don't mind setting it up for you to knock it out of the park. But when uh, we're getting in contact with Ivan, obviously, um, we'll we'll you know look to send stuff over email and uh, get a contact number. And Ivan's WhatsApp picture is looking resplendent in a. Um, a Sweden shirt and hat as well for good measure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, this very this hat. Hang on. <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's it. There we go. Yes. Oh, there you go. They obviously I forgot that was my WhatsApp photo actually, which is quite funny. <laughs> um I wish there was a story, but it's um when we do product shoots, obviously being still a small business, we just kind of use the people that we have. So um, we had a massive World Cup photo shoot day um, by our incredible creative director, Molly. Um, and I went, you can have me as a model, but only if you let me wear the sweet shirt. Yeah. Um, but I just, I think for this shirt, particularly the home one, we talked a bit earlier about how you kind of have the, the hype from last year's um, Euros to live up to with the kits and Sweden went very similar. Again, it's a, the, the Adidas one that was used across across the board, but I think this lives up to it. I think it looks great. I just love central badges. I don't know what it is about them. I just think they look so, so smart, um, which is is great. I also think it kind of like, so I, I'm from Middlesbrough. There's no Sweden connection at all for me. Um, I was thinking, because I've not heard the name Arben before, so I was thinking, wow, that must be a Swedish name. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. There's no, um, I, well, there's like, I, I have a lot of Swedish friends, not through football, through uh, Eurovision instead, um, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. But uh, I'm just partial to Sweden. And it kind of looks like, I don't know if you've seen the, the Middlesbrough Away kit this year. It looks kind of like the inverse of that, which I think is sick. But yeah, I just, I love this shirt. And I think the Adidas one that they're using this time around and they used for the World Cup last year is just, is it's the kind of more boxier, um, more angular kind of font 
and he works really well with this. And I agree with the comment about it making the Adidas logo, the new Adidas logo, not look shit. <laughs> See, you're quite a hypocrite there because you're saying Puma, when they do it, it's, like, it's fantastic. I actually think when you look back, I think Adidas, it, I think it works, but I love it now without the the text there. I think it's nice. Yeah, I, did, I, didn't it, like, I didn't like the change initially, but that's just because I'm yeah. a curmudgeonly old man. Um, but no. now, now I've, I've warmed to it, yeah, I like it. I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, there it is on pitch as well. Which, funny enough, it's, it works out nice. That was actually the shirt that it's replaced, which is quite funny. The South Africa shirt. <laughs> so, that I, have have one. One. I don't know. I, I don't know. Sean, Sean said it would have been his number one, Sean. I think he was not happy that you've changed it. So, next time you see him dump, he's going to be somewhere, I suppose. But... Um, and that's why we like. It's in protest. He's put it now, isn't it? That's all it is. It's protest. <laughs> it's Zambia, Zambia's death yeah. protest. But well, hey, Sweden's Sweden's now going to be now in protest. But there we go. Our number one shirt this week, and I think rightly so, is the Sweden home shirt. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, with thirty-eight points overall from our rankers. So there we go. Uh, let's have a look. Just so you, should, you know, I do not cheat, and I do spend a lot of time. I say write it out and then calculate, use my calculator on my phone. I'll be honest with you. Uh, just to show everyone's scores. And everyone's Why don't you put a formula in the Excel sheet? I don't need to. You don't know how to. Don't you Don't you judge my Excel. I don't, obviously, I, but I'm making it sound like I do a lot of work on the show, Dom. I'm, I'm trying to make it seem like it's the effort goes into it. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. You know, I didn't I wasn't expecting to be attacked there. That's our show this week, the, the Women's World Cup. Ten of the best, I would say, of the World Cup. And sadly, no Adidas away shirts, which could have been an episode just on them. I'll be honest with you. Some of them are just some of the greatest shirts released for the last few years. But thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being involved. Thank you for enjoying the show. I'm sure you have done, because I know, well, I have anyway. I, I don't know about these two. I'll find out now. Dom, you had fun? Yes, I did, Frank, as always. Sure. You know what? I struggle to sleep, me after this. Um, thinking, oh, yeah, but, but what about the way they've applied that match detail in? And I go, it's three o'clock, kid, with you, and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, I just thought you was really buzzing. I didn't think you'd like me thinking about stuff. That's, oh, I should have said this. Why have I not? Oh, fair. fair well, well at, uh, least, at least now I've got football to watch, so it's fine. That's, that's true. Uh, Anything going on you want to tell the lovely people about? Um, no. Um, other than I was recently at um, FC United Women versus Mancunian Unity. Obviously, Manchester's only um, women and girls only football team. Um, and yeah, keep your eyes peeled because we've got some stuff coming up uh, with them as well, which should be good to get involved in. Keep an eye out. Sounds absolutely fantastic. Arvin, thank you so much for coming. It's been amazing to have you on and, and being a part of the, the full kit Rankers family. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've had fun. And yeah, tell us more about uh, Faris as well and where people can find you and give it a nice big talk, please. Brilliant. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been really fun. I could talk about football kits like all day, even though working them every day. Um, Foudies, we you can be found that you can find us at foudies.com. I think it's like there. Um, that's our web store. But we also have a lot of exciting content coming um, from two of our uh, our founder and our social media like creative person, Irie and Helen, are both in Australia, uh, covering pretty much every game they can. They've got FIFA accreditation, so they're also in a lot of press conferences. So that's over at We Are Foudies on Instagram and Twitter, and also TikTok. Um, yeah, like big, big, big things coming from that World Cup. So, fingers crossed, we get some more shoots like we did with Lucy Bronze recently. So, hopefully, it's only just on a bigger and better things. So, yeah. I saw, I saw that chair. I saw that chair at the uh, National Football Museum a couple of weeks ago when I was there. That was class. I think they got a pair of Lucy Bronze's boots in there as well. I haven't been in since it's been in the uh, in the museum, but I think so but uh, yeah that was all made from helen's personal collection of kits so it's uh something that was the, very the curious. shots the shots that i'd seen that helen was part of for that as well were really really impressive 
yeah so it was a, a really sick project that we got to do with her um obviously pre world cup and just kind of talk a bit about her her journey um as well as get some really sick content shots on that chair and she was she was great she was so like given when it comes to uh, chatting about her experiences in the women's game so it was really cool Absolutely. obviously all the links for parties will be in description make sure you go and check them out i'm going to be going over there for a martyr shirt soon as soon as we get them so uh <laughs> i'll definitely be over there for that as always thank you for stopping by and dropping into the ramp bank we'll be back for more full kit rankers there's the island kits and the like be sure to smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel share it with your kit loving friends as you can tell there's plenty of us around so the more that become a kit head the better take care see you later and whatever you do just make sure you keep talking kit